Hello everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror the Card Game List video. Today we got something special for you guys that was uh, suggested by one of our viewers. I don't remember who it was because it was probably eight months ago. Uh, but uh, we're going to be... Uh, Travis actually is uh, made a bunch of custom Arkham Horror the Card Game cards inspired by yeah. cards from Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. Uh, Arkham Horror Second Edition is was my first, and I imagine your guys's first uh, journey into the Arkham Files games from Fantasy Flight Games. So, uh, for me, I can't speak for my my co-host, but there's a lot of uh, emotional attachment to the um, Arkham Horror the card uh, Arkham Horror Second Edition. So I'm excited whenever there's cards from that game translated into player cards here. Uh, and Travis just made a few custom ones for us to talk about. So that's what we're going to be doing today. No, Bryn and I have a great history with this game, too. Uh, we used to go over to Bryn's house every Wednesday for a vote. It's probably like two or three years to play Arkham 2nd Edition and later Arkham 3rd Edition. You know, we, we'd make some homemade oh. pizza. and not, then uh, uh, not 3rd Edition, Bryn, Elder Tor. Elder Tor, uh, yeah, sorry, not 3rd yeah, Edition. Yeah, it's... yeah, and then we had some other friends come over, and it was a good time. We did that for a long time. Yeah. yeah probably like five or six years. In total, yep. Yeah. Um, so, we, before we get to the cards, Travis, what was kind of your philosophy when it came to designing all these? Uh, I read the cards. I didn't just take uh, inspiration from the second edition ones. I also took inspiration from third edition. And I even for some of them, I even looked at like the Call of Cthulhu versions of those cards, even though I don't know how to play that game. And a lot <laughs> of it was gibberish to me. Yep. And then I thought, like, how could this make a cool card? Something that was different, something that was unique, and while still being representative, the card did. Yeah. And, you know, th these cards all have things like symbols for committing, and they have resource costs and experience costs, but uh, I tried my best to make them balanced, but I don't know if they are. Yeah, balancing yep. is definitely the hardest part when it comes to the custom making them cards. It is. Uh, you're going to see on the left of the screen, we're going to have the original card from 2nd Edition, even though it probably, as Travis has said, appeared in many other editions of their Arkham Files games. But we're just going to be focusing on the 2nd Edition cards just for your guys' reference, and then Travis's design card is going to be in the middle. We're going to jump to the first one, which is Plum the Void. So, as you can see from the original, uh, the movement is cast and discard while in Arkham. Move one investigator in another world to any location with a gate matching his other world or, or to your location. And the Plum the Void is a four cost ritual event that commits for a brain and a foot. Uh, the uh, attached to your location, attached location gains as an action, return Plum the Void to its owner's hand, move to any revealed location. So this one was tough because uh, both the second edition and the Elder Tor version of Plum the Void are very strong. Mm -hmm. because they enable massive amounts of movement, which is something that is, like, obviously kind of broken in this game. <laughs> so I needed to figure out... I still wanted to maintain that, like, mass amounts of movement, but also, like, make it very costly and clumsy to use. So it's, like, Plum the Void, four, costing four... It is repeatable. Yes. Um, but you have to pay four resources every time, which is a lot. And it also costs you, like, two actions to move yourself. Mm-hmm. But you could also play it down and have another investigator move. That's what I think which is so intentionally restrictive. That's what I think is so cool about this card um, is that the flavor, like you set up the ritual, and then you're like, Mark, if you ever need to get anywhere, just do these three steps, and then Mark can do those steps and transport to any revealed location. I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It also makes this card distinct from astral travel, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. otherwise would just let you move any place being able to move other players mm -hmm. gives this card a bit of a niche the ones yeah it also like they have to be willing so you can't move them yourself because <laughs> they're the one who have to use the action yeah right? yeah yeah which uh in arkham horror second edition they did not have to be yeah <laughs> yeah you're like yeah. Hey, now. they're like i do yeah. not to be and you're like well <laughs> of the tough. ones <laughs> that i read this one was my favorite of your designs. I just think this was really, a, you just really captured the spell with this one, and I think it'd be very fun to actually play with the game. Yeah, a lot of the other ones were like a little boring because most of them are just like weapons or like mm -hmm. combat spells, as yeah. most of the unimplemented things are. 
but I'm really maybe. hoping that somewhere in these custom cards is a card that just costs money to play and doesn't do anything. And it represents one of the cards from Arkham Horror, the second edition, that you could get at random that just ate your slot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't do anything. All right, well, let's see uh, what's he next. He is not here. Let's see what's next. We got uh, Brazier of Souls. It's a magical weapon in the original. Any phase exhaust before making a combat check to gain plus eight to that check. Uh, upkeep, uh, it only refreshes uh, if you spend all of your focus to do so. So focus is a resource you had in second edition that allowed you to change your stats. In the original card, it only um, readied when you would spend some of your focus on that. So the asset here is a uh, Guardian and Mystic four cost. Uh, Item, weapon, ritual asset that takes up two hands in a spell slot, commits for a brain and a fist. It doesn't ready during the upkeep phase. As an action, you can exhaust it to fight. Add your skill value to your, add your brain to your skill value for this combat. This attack deals plus one damage for each resource on Brazier of Souls. If this attack defeats an enemy, place one resource on Brazier of Souls. Forced, at the end of the round, test brain X, where X is the amount of horror on Brazier of Souls. If you succeed, ready it. I'm actually like super proud of the design for this one, and uh, like minor spoilers coming that there's also the upgraded version for the Guardian, the Mystic as well, yep. and differentiating them while having them be the same theme. Uh, so this one, like obviously, it, it takes up a lot of slots because it's a very powerful effect as long as you can keep making the brain test, and it it's a spell that like it gets to a point where it's very strong, but also like you just can't manage it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can chunk something in one fight action for four damage, but then, like, you have to be consistently passing brain four tests, and even if you can't pass them, like, you still have to make them. Yeah. Man, how strong would this card be with that uh, guardian event, this, like, ready or guardian asset? Then take another action. Oh. <laughs> just, That's like... Sick. Just magic Gatling. Yeah, gun. just, like... Fire it up to the point where you can't, you can't actually succeed the test anymore. Yeah. Then you're like, no, nah, I'm just going to kill you anyway, though. Yeah. Uh, so, as Travis said, there's some uh, upgraded versions, so I'll just get those on the screen. So the blue one, uh, it's a four-cost guardian asset, takes up two hands and a spell slot, commits for a fist and a wild. Uh, doesn't ready during your upkeep phase again as an action exhausted fight add your brain value to the skill value for this combat this attack deals plus one damage for each horror on brazier of souls if this attack defeats an enemy take one horror at the end of the round test brain x where x is the amount of horror on brazier of souls if you succeed ready it and then the purple one is uh four cost again uh they're both three experience commits for a brain and a wild it doesn't ready during the upkeep phase as an action exhaust it add your skill your brain value to your skill value for this combat this attack deals plus one damage for each doom in play if this attack defeats an enemy, place one Doom on Brazier of Souls. At the end of the round, test Brain X, where X is the amount of Doom in play. If you succeed, ready it. Yeah, so like the blue one is intended to be Soak. Mm -hmm. And the benefit with it is like it never gets higher. Like you, you can just top out at like four Brain Test. Um, but then like you have to start taking the Horror. Mm -hmm. Which is like intended to be viable for a couple more attacks, but after a while, like you, you can't. You can't be doming a rat for six damage and taking a horror every time a rat shows up, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could. You could. <laughs> but, like, it's going to get real tough real fast. Yeah. Uh, or you can just keep it like a medium weapon for, like, you know, dealing two, three damage and attack and making the test. And, like, sometimes it's not going to be available because you failed the test, you drew poorly. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, like, you're probably not, unless you're jumping through other hoops, you're probably not going to have many other options to fight with. Yeah, because it takes up two hand slots in the end yeah. of the ritual slot. Yeah, if you're playing and... Tommy Muldoon, this would be insane. Oh yeah, like kind of yeah. Uh, you can also then you could also play like Peter Sylvester to tank the horror for you. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> just like sit it at like three cost. Yeah, you oh know. baby. The other side is like again, you can only use it to fight one thing a turn. So if you yeah. have more than one yeah. enemy, you're in a bit of a tough spot. But mm -hmm. um, and then the purple one, uh, again, like it gets a doom, so it will eventually reset itself yep. but also it becomes garbage when that happens right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I felt like counting only the doom on it was tough because how often are you going to get three-ish doom on it before doom takes over Yeah, right? Yeah. so I decided to have a count all doom in play so like 
uh, for those of you at home, it's like a little bit of a niche uh, knowledge thing where Doom and Play doesn't count the Doom on agendas. Um, I, at least know, I, I, I didn't even know that. that. I'm pretty sure that I, I looked it up and that's what I said. Anyway, that's intended to be how the card interacts. Cool. If not, it would just count like uh, agenda, Doom on cards, non-agenda cards in play or something like that. Yeah, I think these cards yep. are sick, and I definitely probably will be taking these files Travis made and putting them in the tabletop mod so we can actually play with them sometime. No. Theor theory craft and some standalones, I think that could be pretty fun. So. Yeah, these cards would also be really cool with the upgraded bandolier. Yes, yeah. Uh, because they are weapons, and they will fulfill their own criteria and give you plus one brain for the score. That's pretty sick. Uh, that would be kind of neat. All right, let's see what's next. The Gladius of Carcosa. As you can see on the left, it's a magical weapon that gives you plus four to combat checks or plus five if your other hand is empty. Uh, Travis didn't just do something that simple. He actually did something pretty cool with this one. This is a three cost uh, item weapon melee cursed uh, asset that takes up both your hand slots. Uh, commits for a brain, a brain, and a fist. And when you add this card to your deck, search your, the collection for a random basic madness weekend and add it to your bonded cards. As additional cost to put this card into play, you must search your bonded cards for a basic madness weakness and draw it. As an action fight, you get plus one fist for this attack for each horror on you. And this attack deals plus one damage, plus two damage instead if you have two or more madness weakens, weaknesses in your discard pile. I, I just think note on the previous one, do my agenda, it looks like it does count as a one in play, and I misread that when I made the card, so that should say non agenda. But. All right. Good to know. Uh, yeah. I think this card's really fun and really captures the feeling of Carcosa in a very cool way. It's much more cool than this card is literally just an axe. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> you notice it takes up two hand slots because uh, the other one gives you a benefit if you have two hands on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, like, this card is not unintentionally designed to be re really good with well prepared. But this one's like a little tough because it's hard to balance how strong it is with like what weakness you randomly get, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, sometimes the weakness is just gonna be crippling to you, and you're just like, "Woo!" Like throw away <laughs> my resources. But yeah, another but neat like thing about this you one, just spent them all on this sword. Yeah. Uh, another neat thing about this is because it takes a random weakness from your bonding cards. If you have two copies of Gladius of Carcosa in your deck, you don't know which weakness you're gonna get the first time. Search your bonded cards. But, like, if you have two from how it's written, if you have two in your deck, you can choose which of your. Um, so, like, say you have. You have oh, two did I not write random on there? No, you didn't. Okay. Oh, well, like, whatever. Either way is fine. I, yeah, I, yeah, I think. I but either way, the, the flavor and intention is there in the design, which is that, like, yeah. wielding the sword makes you go mad, but. The madder you are, the better you are at wielding the sword. I think it the flavor of it really resonates. Yeah, I like I really, wanted to, I tried to explore things that like the game hadn't done before as well. Yeah, I really wish though the card was just fight. You get plus one attack, plus one fist with this attack. If you don't have if your other hand slot is empty, you get plus two. And we're like, <laughs> he did it, folks. He did it. The yeah. only one of these that's like a little bit meany is the milk. Oh, that's so funny. I just, I haven't read what they did, but I read the uh, tags you have for them. I don't think those are in this yeah. week's. There's going to be nine more of these. Travis did make a bunch, but this is just the first episode. Okay. Let's move on to the Migo Brain Case. So, movement, wall, and Arkham Exhaust, and spend all your movement points for the turn to swap places with another investigator. Uh, the custom card is a two cost, five experience, neutral asset that takes up your relic slot. Uh, item in science commits for a brain, a foot, and a wild symbol as an action. You can exhaust Migo brain case. Choose another investigator. Exchange locations with that investigator. This does not count as a move action. And exchange e each card in each of your threat areas. Chef's this kiss. This one was tough. <laughs> yes, Bryn, I bounced like four or five different iterations of this card off him before I came up with this one. You know, yeah. you, it, it's... It's a surprise while reading the card that it was so tough because, like, to me, you like it, it reads like you nailed it, and it's so simple. And like, I love what it does. Yeah, yeah. There was the one. Rider, of them. Sorry, the, go ahead. 
Uh, uh, I was going to talk for, about that, yeah. The writer for it, uh, not counting as a move action, was just there. I'm not sure if it like, would actually matter in the rules or not, but um, I didn't want to count as a move action because flavorfully, you're not moving to their location, you're switching brains with them, switching yeah. minds with them. And also, I didn't want to have to worry about people taking attacks of opportunity from, like, the person you're switching with, like, taking an attack of opportunity or some garbage from the enemy they're engaged with. Yeah. And I just put that in there instead of trying to read the rules and figure out whether they would or not. <laughs> I would just so use this. You say? I would just use this every turn. Yeah. There was so Justin. There were there were two amazing concepts for this that I'm kind of glad weren't the ones he went with. Yeah. But they would have been. They were incredible. Where one of them you switched your deck in hand with the other investigator. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like one where you actually traded like investigator cards. Oh, those are juicy. But this one does work best within the confines of the game. Yeah. Like, yeah, like but... those ones are, I want the card to be something that you would actually play. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think well, that's, a, that's a good goal for custom cards. Instead of just being like, hey, teammate, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that also captures the flavor of the original Mega of Rain Case, <laughs> it does. where randomly you could just screw one of your teammates over and they had no say in what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this one doesn't require their consent. <laughs> yeah, that does not. You can just do it. All yeah. right, let's well, hop on. You're the one with the Brain Case. Uh, let's hop on. Old. They do get the Brain Case. No, they don't. They don't. You keep it with you. That's right. Okay. I don't know why I said yeah. that. They just started running a bath or shower, and it always deafens this room. Oh, the Serpent Crown. Any phase, exhaust this card to gain one ally. During the upkeep phase of the next turn, return that ally to the box, even if the ally was discarded. Uh, otherwise, it's a survivor item relic asset that takes up the relic slot. Two cost, four experience. Commits for a brain, a fist, and a foot. As a reaction, at the end of the enemy phase, exhaust the Serpent Crown. Each enemy that you dealt damage to or evaded this round takes one damage. Yes, this one has nothing to do with the original, but I saw Serpent Crown, and I thought Snake, and I thought Poison, and I was like, this would be a cool card. You and know, that's, that's it. it's... This card's also... I, I think it's pretty sick. Like, I love it in Rita. Yes. Like, that's spicy. I, I know... I thought you guys would love this card, because... Mm. Uh, you can play it in York for extra damage. You can play it in Rita for a little bit of extra damage. You can play it in Silas mm -hmm. for extra damage. Um, it's knowable that I want to make it the end of the enemy phase, so it wasn't just a free damage every round. Well, I think I so think that's, had to, that like, makes it. Attacks them or evade them. Yeah, you I think that's what makes it Ursula to run away from rats and kill. Them. Oh. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the cards <laughs> sick, and I love the. Um, the tagline you have for it, the subtitle for just mm -hmm. being like, so this this is what's happening. It's Venom. We're poisoning them. Let's kill them. I had to look up that guy, the the specific name from the. I had to drag up my copy of the, the Necronomicon and like look through the under the pyramid story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do. I do also appreciate how this one doesn't really do anything compared with the original one because the original one's effect was entirely based around how you gain allies in Arkham second edition which has nothing to do with the way that the card game is yeah yeah to be honest i didn't even read the arkham second edition card before i made this one i just saw serpent yeah. and i was like yeah sick sick all right let's see what's next oh it's tom mountain murphy so he's an ally that gives you plus two fight you take no stamina loss from the overwhelming ability it's all gibberish <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom Mountain Murphy, he's a four cost green asset that takes uh, one experience. He has three meat damage and one sanity damage. He's a criminal and an ally, and as an action, you can exhaust him to fight. You attack with a base fist of five. This attack deals plus one damage if the attacked enemy is exhausted. As a lightning bolt, when you initiate a fight action, Exhaust Tom the Mountain Murphy, you get plus two uh, to this skill test, and then you get to ignore the retaliate keyword for this attack, which is where the gibberish on the other card comes into play. <laughs> yeah, so the flavor behind this one is that either you uh, make a foot test to hold them down while Tom beats them up, or he holds them down while you punch them. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, no, I do, I, do like, I do like this one, though. Extra damage. Oh, I, I knew you'd like this one, Brent. 
extra damage on evade, you like trip the guy and you're like, yeah, punch him in the kidney, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> you trip the guy and Paul just comes out and pile drives him or whatever. I, I yeah. love that. I think that's. I actually didn't even realize that flavor, but that flavor is hilarious to me because <laughs> it tells such a story that I could see us making good jokes playing with it. Well, we made that's that's where this card came from. Is we used to make jokes about uh, Tom Mount Murphy like holding the guy down for you or whatever, or doing the fighting for you. Amazing. That's great. I think something he does. He like saves you from a monster or something like that. Yeah. In, uh, the encounter card that you get him in, in the Black Cave from Second Edition. There's there's two cards that you can get him from, and one of them is at the university, and one is in the Black Cave. <laughs> and the one at the university, he makes you arm wrestle him. And if you beat him, he's like, yeah. Yeah, I it's like, you're, you're worth, you're yeah. worth partying with. <laughs> but if you lose, you just take damage because he's really strong and, like, breaks your arm or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Yeah. Dread Curse of Azathoth. Uh, cast an exhaust to gain plus nine to combat checks until the end of this combat. For reference, nine is a very high number. So, let's see. Yeah, so, see. like, you get to roll nine extra dice. Is yeah. What that means. Uh, so it's a four-cost mystic event that costs five experience. It commits for two brains and two fists. Uh, it's a spell and it's cursed. As additional cost to play Dread Curse, place up to three doom on your investigator card. Fight this attack uses brain instead of fist. You get plus one brain and deal plus one damage with this attack for each doom in play. This one's intended to count the stuff on the agenda. Yeah. Dude. Uh, yeah, so this one was like also tough to design because I didn't want a super powerful repeatable combat spell. Mm -hmm. And also, like, most of the spell the spells in this game don't explicitly invoke ancient ones. Whereas this one, like, does. It's the Dread Curse of Azathoth, and I don't think that they would label it as being of Azathoth. But, um... Like, yeah, you, you put a bunch of Doom on your character card because you're, like, asking Azathoth for help. Mm -hmm. And then you get to, you just get to blow the piss out of something. And that's it. It's the card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if this card came out during the later half of the uh, Path to Carcosa, mm -hmm. this would definitely be called the Dread Curse Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to try to trick you into taking damage. <laughs> yes, yeah. That would be funny. <laughs> As an additional cost no, to play no. Dread Curse of Haster, place up to three Doom on your Investigator card and say the title of the card out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the only the only beef I have with this card is that it doesn't cap the damage. So you could theoretically just walk into a room and be like, one fight action, all the marbles, yig. Let's go. I mean, like, that is... I could also have made this, like, exceptional, I guess. Like, it is intended... Like, so, in the stories, invoking Azathoth's name is, like, the most... The, the worst curse that you can inflict on someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? yeah, no, I, I don't when, I don't say that it's... I'm not saying that it's unflavorful. Like, the Dread Curse of Azathoth in 2nd Edition often just killed whatever you were fighting with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although Ancient Ones had, like, a giant pile of hit points. Yeah, no, no I, it I could be card... like capped at like three investigator damage or something like that. I guess. Yeah, capping an investigator damage would be sick. And then the only other thing I would change is make it place at least one doom on your investigator card to really get that flavor of talking to Azathoth. Yeah, but, but I think the I mean I think the flavor of having like this be a big spell that's just like an explosion of power is is successful in the design mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a few things to be tweaked on this one, but. Uh, what's up next? The Fist of Yog sothoth So, this is a magical spell which casting modern fire sanity cost, who cares? Any phase, cast an exhaust to gain plus X to combat checks until the end of the round, where X is the number of successes you rolled on your spell check. Alright, I guess the casting modifier and sanity costs do matter. But, correct me if I'm wrong, but to cast spells, you would need to roll dice equal to your lore plus the casting modifier, and then, uh, if you roll the success, you cast the spell, but you also had to pay one sanity to do it. Is that correct? Yeah, you had to you had to pay however much sanity the sanity cost was. But yeah, the, it's it, that that is correct. So, All right. Yeah, I hate I hate the art for this card, but oh yeah, it's <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, let's see what Travis did. It's a two cost ritual cursed asset that costs four experience, takes up a hand slot and a spell slot, commits for two brain. As a lightning bolt during a skill test, you perform an exhaust fist of Yog Sothoth. Choose a number. Test brain X, where X is the chosen number. If you succeed, you get plus X skill value for this test. 
That's great. I love it. I think it should also deal like a bonus damage. Cause the like cause the test to deal extra damage. You're not fighting though. Not necessarily. It's any skill test. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I think yeah, that's I think that's great because then you get the person it's like, I'm going to say three and then everyone else at the table is like, well, why don't you just say four? <laughs> <laughs> you got six brain. I bet you could pass a, a brain five test. Yeah. It's like, I could commit a card to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I especially like this too because um, it's like one of those tests you can take that's like inconsequential and I think more of those can be pretty fun for making weird, broken combinations and engines in the game. Yeah, that's mostly why this one. So there's two reasons this one costs or it takes up a fist or a hand and an arcane slot. First of all, like it's a spell or a ritual, whatever. It has to take up an arcane slot, and then also it's a fist of Yog Sotha. So yeah, you need a you fist. Know, the fist guy's hand, hand yeah. is all sparkly. Yeah, like it is also just like a very flexible card mm -hmm. in what it does. Where I, I feel like you could, you know, you're playing a, a if you're playing with Mystics, you can play this. You can play level four mystic cards. You can probably just pass like brain two tests all day, brain three tests all day, right? Yeah. And so just being able to get plus two or plus three to any test every turn is like that's that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's right. sweet. I also love that you carried over the plus X from the design. I think that's pretty clever. Yeah. Alright, okay. I think the next card is the last card. It is. I think. Fetch stick. <laughs> This is a magical weapon. Any phase exhaust before making a combat check to gain plus seven to that check. It takes up two hand slots. Hey, look, Travis's does too. He nailed it. Fetch stick is Amazing. a four cost, three experience, survivor, uh, item, weapon, tool, cursed asset. As I said, takes up two hand slots. It commits for a book, a fist, and a wild. As additional cost to put this card into play, you must discard a non-creature ally asset from play. As an action, exhaust, fetch stick, fight. You get plus two fist for this attack. This attack deals plus one damage for each non-creature ally in your discard pile. As an action, exhaust, fetch stick, discover a clue at your location. So I imagine you took some inspiration from some other cards for this design. I had to look up what an actual fetch stick was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where uh, the skulls on them are like people that you have to kill. Kill, cool, yeah. Make the spell work. Or the thing work. Uh, the getting a clue from the fetch stick is... Um, from the Elritch Horror card, which is like when you kill an enemy you get a clue or something like that cool um and like the curse uh, dread curse this one could probably use a damage cap um it occurs to me now how easy it is to discard non-creature allies especially but, in red <laughs> yeah yeah also like yeah. the non-creature tag is there because you have to kill humans to get the skulls obviously they're human skulls so you can't just like throw away your bird or your cat or whatever and be like yeah what do you I mean it. I can't just play <laughs> miss doyle to get an unending supply of cats to throw at my fetch sticks <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think it's fun, uh, and I think it, it's. I think with a damage cap, yeah, it would probably be would probably be nice because especially It'd be like probably like plus plus two, maybe plus three. Yeah. Because it does. Yeah. You do have to like spend action playing an ally, and then pay the four and the action to play the fetch stick and discard the ally from play, mm -hmm. and it takes up both your hand slots. Oh too. man. But like, you get to play this card. Um. I guess there isn't really an investigator who can do this right now, but if you could play level three red cards and level one green cards, you could play like the hired muscle and be like, hold, hold still. I need your yeah, skull for a thing. And he's like, what? Yeah, could. And then uh, you, you kill him. I suppose Wendy could do that, but then you're fighting at three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Like Wendy, Wendy could do that, but yeah, yeah like she's Wendy not very good at the whole fight. This. Yeah. This does make me feel like, uh, I mean, getting a clue every turn is pretty sick. And like, especially, uh, yeah, I just, I think it, it's engaging. And that's what I like about all these cards because they're also um, true to Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. They're all, they, they do a lot of things and they're, they're very like, you know, they can just, there's a lot of text on them, which makes them really fun to explore and theory craft around. Yeah, Travis, thanks for making these. And we do have nine more that we're going to do in a, uh, release another video in a few weeks about. So look forward to that if you like that. And if you want to see more custom card content on our channel, please let us know in the comments below. We've heard some people talk about it before, but we haven't actually made any content like that. So if you're interested, let us know. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one and GG's.